We want uh, long-term capital gains instead of short-term capital gains, right? So it's, it's, all about, that. it's all about taxes. I mean, if you can wait just a few months and, and save quite a bit on taxes, then, then that's what we're going to do. And that's what, that's what our plan is, and that's what we will do. So, Brian, what's up, man? Hey, not much. How was your weekend? It was really good. It was really good. So, I'm excited we're doing a live. Let me get this shared really quick. I don't know how to do that. we got to figure this live thing out. Yeah, we're testing it out. But generally speaking, we're going to talk about our latest, um, the latest investment opportunity. Yeah. Right? So, we did that last uh, Kitty Academy. Go through that a little a little bit. I'm going to get this shared. Okay. Uh, we've actually got a couple uh, that are going on right now. Our first one we started last, uh, first of 2020. It's a Kitty Academy in um, Columbine, south of south of Denver. Yeah. Um, Kitty Academy is early childhood uh, education, sort of child care education. So their philosophy is that they do child care. They're, they're anywhere from infants to, to 12 years old, but um, – their, their philosophy is that, um, that they're going to have some education, some health and fitness, and just pretty rounded curriculum rather than just normal child care. Yeah, and I think it's a good setup because, we, I mean, we timed it really well. We were kind of looking at that early childhood education space because it's, it's a good asset class to have because it's pretty stable, right? Yeah. Children are always going to be around. They're always going to need education. They're typically going to need a kind of semi-quasi babysitter or why parents are in, at an at school or at work or you know whatever how yeah, it's always are. it's always going to be needed no matter what well and we saw that during the 2020 right during the during the pandemic it yeah. it these places thrive because um people still needed to to work they they, they spent the first part of their paychecks on their kids right mm -hmm. they want their kids no matter what happens to them they want their kids to to do well and not to suffer yeah and i mean if if schools are shutting down i mean they're going to need be needed even worse and what we found is a lot of these um early childhood education facilities like you know the goddard school or kitty academy or primrose academy or, or just you know stuff along those lines a lot of them stayed open yeah. and were full throughout COVID or, or last year and are full now yeah people had to move into them right not away from them their kids weren't in school they needed them in school the parents had to work as much as they could uh, i think more people have decided maybe to transfer to these kind of places full time. I think some of the parents kind of lost lost faith in the in the public uh, school system during a pandemic. Right? Yeah. Sometimes they were in school. Sometimes they were out of school. Their online curriculum didn't work very well, and they just got tired of it. And they said, "Hey, we're going to go someplace where they've got it together. Kids can be in in class and learning." Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to get into this too much, right? But, like, I send my kids to a smaller school just because of that reason. You know, it's a smaller school like a Kitty Academy. It's a it's privately owned. You know, there's less people, less contact. And they haven't been shut down through COVID one time. So we've been, you know, extremely fortunate. Yeah. But anyway, um, this is about the latest investment. So what we do is we go in and we um, we partner with a group down in Dallas-Fort Worth. Company's called the Woodmont Company. Definitely couldn't do it without them. Those guys are yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, but we go in and we basically um, have a pre-assigned uh, 15-year lease before we even fund the deal, before we even offer it to our investors. So, so there, there's some security there just in the fact that 15 years is a really long time. So somebody's fully committed to that building for 15 years. They've got um, annual lease increases already built in. Obviously, these people have been highly vetted to make sure that they're uh, responsible and know, know what they're doing, right? They've got the funds and everything else. Yeah, it's, it's funny. Um, there's typically one... You know, it's typically a husband and, and wife or, or a couple combo, and there's typically one of them that's deeply rooted in education, and then the other one is is typically um, more, you know, entrepreneurial minded, mm -hmm. um, and they want to go own a business, and then they couple right. up and you know can really dominate it. Yeah. But yeah, you're getting financial statements and balance sheets and um, you know resumes and everything, and we, you know, the um, the Woodmont company, our partners down in Fort Worth, they have weekly calls with a tenant once we get up and, and running and start construction just to make sure, you know, we don't miss a beat in, in communication because when you're building a new building like this, timing isn't an exact science, right? Right. But generally speaking, we're, we're going to go in, we get this lease signed for 15 years and then we just go build the building. Um, so a lot of it, you know, you want to build it for as cheap as possible, but for quality. So a lot of it is just architectural documents, getting, getting bids out, getting competitive pricing, making sure land is for a good price. So our partners in Fort Worth do a lot of the site identification for Kitty Academy. Right. 
their preferred developer forum. Um, so Kitty Academy says, hey, we want to be in these markets or we have these franchisees that want to open up locations and, and Woodmont really goes in and, and finds the perfect spot, yeah. which is good because they're great land brokerage yeah. guys. I mean, they, they can find a good piece of land. And it could be anywhere in the U.S., right? I mean, Woodmont works all over the U.S. Kitty Academy has, yeah. what, 259 locations all across the U.S. I mean, it's from West Coast to East Coast and North to, to the South. So it could be anywhere. Yeah, and I think they're in, you know, 30 states or something. Yeah. Um, but, you know, pros and cons, and feel free to just, you know, ask a question um, if one comes up. But pros and cons is they're, they're shorter deals. So a lot of our other deals can be five, seven, ten-year deals just waiting for the asset to appreciate enough um, to recapitalize through some sort of sale or refinance later on down the road. Whereas this one, the, the business plan, the profit to be made is strictly on your delta between the cost it takes you to develop it versus what the income is worth after the tenant is in there and the building is done. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're selling less on the value of the inherent real estate and obviously on the, the income, right? Because we're gonna sell this to somebody who wants the stream of income right. that this building will produce after the tenant is in there. Right. And they can go in and say, hey, you know, there's a 15 year lease on this. It's in a great area of town. You know, the, the one we did in Columbine, that's infill. I mean, there's, there's no lots yeah. in Columbine. You can just go pick up, you know, it's, it's really hard to find good location. Yeah. This last one we did is same. in, you know, same thing, yeah. North Dallas. Right, right in between, um, uh, what is it? Close to north of Addison, I think, between Plano and, and Richardson, I think. So it's a really yeah. good, really good location in North Dallas. Yeah, I mean, Anything, anybody who knows anything about North Dallas knows that they literally can't build houses fast enough. I mean, te Texas is absorbing, you know, most of the jobs leaving California, it yeah. seems like. And, um, you know, I've got some family down in Frisco. And every time I go down there, it's, it's nuts because yeah. of how massive it is. So well, they're having to build a high school close to where we're putting this kitty academy. There's so many families moving in, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which is a good thing because before they go to that high school, they're going to go to our <laughs> kitty academy. Right. Perfect. Right next door uh, to a Kroger as well, which is a really big thing. We're almost in the same shopping center. Um, and we're even picking up some extra land on that deal um, to sell. So that, that'll, that'll be a nice piece, but not really that important. Right. So uh, essentially what happens? So we, uh, um, so we, we uh, partner up with, with uh, Woodmont and then it's time to, uh, you talked about the lease. They found, they found the, the, uh, the land and uh, we're ready to go out uh, to our investors. And so what's, what's kind of the timing from there? Yeah, so we funded a deal, um, you know, this time last year, it was the beginning of January, mm -hmm. end of December. Um, and we're actually flying up to Denver here in a couple of days to go right. check that out because it's done. Yeah. So a year ago, it was a check we wrote and now it's a gorgeous building. Yep. Super excited about that. But yeah, we, we get the site, we vet it. Um, uh, we should be permitted on the new one in, in Dallas um, in the next 30 days or so. So I would say when you can tee up your loan closing, your land closing, and your permitting all in one day, you wanna get funding about a month before that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we've hit, you know, I think three out of the four of those mile markers. We're right. waiting on final permitting, uh, right. but we'll be funding that deal next week. Yeah. Um, and you know, they're, they're nice deals. Um, you know, both of these deals sent out to our investor list and we're full within a week. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't double check with investors on either of these deals. Yeah. Um, you know, normally you go through the rounds, Hey, are you interested? Hey, did you see this deal? Hey, can we yeah. take you out to lunch? You yeah. Know, go through the ringer. But our, our guys love these deals. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, like you said at the beginning, it's because it's, it's a little bit different. Um, you get your money back faster. You get a nice little multiplier on your, on your investment and, uh, then you can you can do it again uh, on on a similar you may be a kitty academy with us again or or we've got you know some other deals that are more traditional that that we've done in the past where you're doing it for the the cash on cash and then and then maybe get sold like you said in five to ten years right right but um, you know one of the one of the big questions I get is what's the risk you know what's the downside of this building right mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, what what's the biggest risk yeah. of the investment yeah it's a good question. But um, you can, th there's markets for these things. So when you're going and buying, you know, stocks or whatever investments, you want to gain, you know, research and analytics and you want to go, you know, vet, you know, that it will sell for that amount. 
or somebody else will buy it for that amount. You know, yeah. you kind of want to verify it third party. You want to make sure this house goes for market. You want to make sure you right. can sell that car for market. So there's a market for these sorts of buildings. And you, I mean, over the past year, we've been watching it closely, obviously, because we're you know pretty highly invested now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of sales of Kitty Academies and, and Primrose schools and Goddard schools. And they're becoming a lot more attractive investment class just because, um, you know, some of the other ones aren't, aren't doing as well yeah. in, in 2020 and, and in yeah. COVID mm -hmm. and this new e-commerce environment. Right. Um, but school is, is really, you know, the, the root of a service based tenant Yeah, because the, the parents have to go to work typically. Right. And these kids have to go somewhere and they're, I mean, we've just found that these schools fill up yeah. so fast. I think a lot of people might be afraid that, Hey, all these other schools because of COVID went to online learning, but I think you talk to nine out of 10 parents or maybe it's 99 out of a hundred. They don't, they didn't like it. They right. didn't like it. They wanted their kids to be in class for, for a variety of reasons. But so I don't think there's any, I don't think there's any chance of, of <laughs> schools going to, you know, mostly online learning. Yeah. And the downside is we finish the building, the tenant gets in there. We've got a 15 year lease with that tenant. Yeah. That's going to be cash line. So, I mean, worst case scenario, we can't sell it, which we can, we would hold on to it and keep the cash flow ourselves. Yeah. Um, I would say the only other risk in that is the risk that the building doesn't get finished, but there's insurances and, and the partnership team that we've put together and the lender and just everybody striving to, you know, to that same um, beat. Right. It, it's hard to, it's hard to mess up that bad on this yeah. deal. It's hard to miss it by that much. Yeah. And especially when you're looking at North Dallas infill of, you know, where it's at, look where it's at, you can look and see where the houses are at, where the people work, you know, the traffic counts on the road, the amount of money they're making, the schools around. I yeah. mean, you can look at the data and the deals are great. Yeah. Another risk people might think is, so what if these, uh, um, what if the franchisee uh, isn't performing? Does Kitty Academy have some, um, um, do they have some ramification that they can go in and, and take it over or, or get rid of that franchisee and bring in another one? What, what, what's the risk there? Yeah. So first of all, Kitty Academy's close rate is less than 1%. I think they've had like two or three wow. and they were all extraordinary circumstances. It wasn't because, you know, the market couldn't support or something yeah. like that. That's really low. It's really low. Yeah. Um, that and Kitty Academy is a franchisee. They do have a right in the lease to step in if they're not operating it right, if they're not hitting benchmarks, if they think it should be done better. Yeah. Um, and we've obviously got a relationship with the tenant. Um, but more importantly, we've got a relationship with the franchisee and, and yeah. Woodmont, especially, you know, they've worked with them for 15, 20 years now, a really long yeah, time. Right. Um, so, I mean, they used to just broker for Kitty Academy and then the trust just kept building up and it was like, Hey guys, we need you in our corner. We need you to vet sites. We need you to build these for us. We need to make sure we're in the best spots. And they've, I mean, they, how been, many, how many of these is Woodmont doing a year? Uh, how many Kitty Academies are they developing a year? Just Woodmont. They're doing about 15 a year. Yeah. So it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. So I, I know they're striving for 15 year and you know, 2020, they probably got delayed a little bit, probably, yeah. but I mean, just the sites they've teed up to us that they haven't, you know, announced yet. And you know, we passed on, a, on, you know, one or two right. already. We, yeah. we could be doing more. Yeah, we could. We just want to make sure <laughs> all these risks that we're talking about and all this, uh, all this data that we have really comes to fruition. And it really has. Yeah. Like you said, we're flying up there day after tomorrow. We're going to do the walkthrough. Hopefully, uh, soon after the certificate of occupancy gets issued and, and, uh, the tenant takes over. And, and then, uh, one thing we haven't discussed is after that, um, I mean, you could take us to the, through the, through the timeline of how long does it take to build? Yeah, let's do that. And, and, uh, then when do we, then when do we look to start selling? Yeah. So we'll have to get some like pictures of the the dirt lot that was before and the building now we'll take some pictures yeah. and maybe put it in post when we upload this. Um, That's a good idea or later, we won't be able to do it in post Tuesday because we fly to Denver Wednesday. Yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll upload it. We'll show you guys. I promise. Um, but anyway, yeah, it starts out with a, a piece of dirt and there's a live construction camera on it. Um, and the biggest thing is you want to be fully permitted. You want to have a loan fully approved. Um, and you want to have your equity funded, you know, all around the same time because it, it you, it, it's all about timing, right? Once you're permitted, it's a pretty smooth train, mm -hmm. right? So you want to get the equity in as close to permitting as possible. So you don't just have dead equity sitting yeah. while you can't do anything right. with it. And permitting is a decent risk or, or yeah, it entitlements, is. It is. whatever you call. 
Um, so you, you want to make sure that you're good or like 99% good on the permitting before you go in. Right. So we're, that's going to happen. Um, then you're going to get the permits and basically that just says, hey, the city or the county or you know, whatever municipality says, hey, you have the right to build that building. We'll inspect along the way, yada, yada, yada. Yep. It's about a six, six to nine month mm -hmm. build time, just depending on weather. Right. They could knock it out in six months if it was sunny and gorgeous every day, but it never is. Well, in Dallas will be a lot better weather than we had in, in Denver. And it wasn't that bad, but um, I mean, there's not that many snow days or, you know, such cold days that you can't do certain things. Yeah, Dallas, so. you know, Denver, um, you know, some of these last things like installing turf and asphalt, you know, it's got to be 40 degrees. Yeah. Um, Dallas, by the time we're breaking ground in mid-February, most of the weather yeah. should be gone. Um, well, it'll be gone and then we'll be done before, you know. Before it comes that? in. Yeah, before it comes in uh, that following fall. So that's good timing. Yeah, so we, um, construction is six to nine months. Um, and then we'll get the certificate of occupancy, which that municipality that gave you the permit comes in and says, hey, um, this is fit to be occupied. You built it to the city standards. You did what you said you were going to do. You know, everything works. It's good. You know, they do the same thing on a house when you build a new house, if you're familiar with that. Mm -hmm. You get the certificate of occupancy, and then we decide to hold it for 12 months. And why do we do that? That's the question, the biggest, like, why don't we sell it immediately? The tenant's in there. Why do we not sell it immediately? Yeah. Yeah, well, we want uh, long-term capital gains instead of short-term capital gains, right? So it's, it's all about that. it's all about taxes. I mean, if you can wait just a few months and and save quite a bit on taxes, then then that's what we're going to do, and that's what that's what our plan is, and that's what we will do. You also get that year of depreciation as well. Yeah, um, so you're depreciating it along the way. Right. Um, it's it's paying down the capital balance. You know, it's cash flowing that year that we hold it, and then um, we're allowed to sell it. 12 months after we get the CO. So um, what was I going to say? We'll tee up the sale or the brokerage or, you know, get it on the market, so to speak, you know, around month six to nine, because yeah. you're going to have a marketing period. You're going to have right. a sale period, you sure. might, you know, lose, lose somebody for whatever reason, maybe they drop it or, you know, whatever. Every, yeah. Things don't go perfect. Yeah. We'd love to sell it just as soon as that 12 months is up. So we got to get started before that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And then, you know, the returns, you know, on the two we've modeled so far, you're looking at like a 1.4 equity multiple from the time you put it in to the time you put it out. You know, if you put in 10,000, you should get out 14. Yeah. And that's going to be about uh, 18 to 24 months. Is yep. that right? Yeah. Yeah. So, and then, so what's your IRR? What's that work out to on an IRR? So the IRR is time-based. So 18 yeah, to 24 right. months, there's a variable there. Right. But we're targeting 20 to 25%. Okay. Um, and those. Depends you know, on how quickly you sell it how quickly you sell it and for what you sell it for and then for what you sell it for. And, and, and again, it's the cap rate. So, you know, you could sell for, you know, six and a half, six point seven five cap rate. You could sell for higher. We, we go in and split the middle and assume a seven cap sale. Mm -hmm. Um, the comps we have, all of them are lower. Yeah. Um, we just do a seven cap because it's modest and it gets us the return. Our investors were happy with, and if they're happy with 20% and it's believable and it's modest, there's yeah. no reason to pitch them 26 when you could hit it. Yeah. I'd right. rather pitch them 20 because yeah. everyone, 20 is arguably, oh, it's got to be risky. Oh, that's too high. You know, yeah. what, what are you doing? That's something different. You're making 20% of your money. That's a lot. Yeah. So you're advertising higher than that. People just won't trust you at face value because they know you're assuming the moon. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to do that. And if you look on the Woodmont uh, website or you look into their, the kitty academies that they've done, that they've closed on now and sold. Yeah. They're, um, their projected returns were always less than the actual returns. They always increased the returns, I think, on nearly every single one of them. There might have been one where it, it, it didn't or maybe it slightly dropped. You know, so what if it, they projected 22 and it went down to, I think the one I'm talking about might have gone, it was still in the 20s, I think, or maybe 18. I mean, that's still a really good return. But a lot of those, a lot of them are netted an, an IRR of in the upper 20s. So that's really good. Yeah, you want to focus on the IRR. You also want to focus on the equity multiple with short-term yeah. deals like this, just because with 18 to 24 months, you know, it's if you're comfortable okay. with the equity multiple, then 18 to 24 months, it's kind of irrelevant almost. Yeah. Right. Um, the next thing I think we should hit real quick is just how, how the investors are doing now. So we oversubscribed this deal um, about a week ago, and then now, you know, the investors are just going through the process of getting their accreditation status verified. So we had a letter typed up. Um, they've got to get signed by their CPA or attorney for this type of deal just because we're advertising it. You know, yeah. we're on Facebook Live. We're screaming it from the top of the mountain, so to speak. So, yeah, so everybody had to be accredited for this particular investment. Exactly. Yeah. 
So they're, they're going through those steps and then, you know, they hit a button on our website. They said, Hey, I want to invest now, or they shot us a text or an email, but yeah. they were in that exclusive investor list. So they got the email, they got the invite. And then we just started getting, you know, peppered with emails. Hey, I want in. Hey, I'm interested. Hey, I'd love to go to lunch, asking more questions or, yeah. or whatever. At the end of the week, it was full. Yeah. And now this week we're, we're sending them documents. Yeah. So the majority of them are going to be in a DocuSign format where we've gone in and, you know, pre-formatted everything. It'll auto-populate certain yeah, fields really based easy. on your profile. So easy. It's so easy. Like it's really said, easy. You click a button that says, I want to invest, and you tell us how much you want to invest. And then uh, a week later, I think, um, you got all the, um, all the forms uploaded. And so you just go in there and click on each form that needs to be signed. And like you said, it's DocuSign. Mm -hmm. You don't have to print anything off. You just sign it, and it sends it back to us. And you and I have to countersign some of it. And, and uh, I mean, literally, you could do all that literally in 15 minutes, I think, don't you? I mean, maybe it takes a little longer to read everything, but I really think you could do it in 30 minutes or so. Yeah. There's, uh, it's funny. There's, there's guys who are really good at paperwork and there's guys who are really well, not good at paperwork. Yeah, it's, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> the real estate guys we have, the sophisticated real estate guys who, you know, own some real estate without us yeah. who are in just in the game of real estate investing, yeah. you know, almost as much as us, yeah. those guys are the best with their paperwork yeah, that's because right. they understand what yeah, it feels like it. to have an investor who's not good with their paperwork. Yeah. There's some guys, I mean, you send them an email, Hey, sign this. And it's, I mean, lickety split. And there's some guys it's like, Hey bro, I really need that form. I yeah. know you gave me money, yeah. but yeah, I need, that form, need, I need that form and I'm going to print it out and I'm going to sign it and I'm going to scan it and I'm going to send it to you. Or I'm going to mail it to you. Yeah. Or I'll drop it off to you. Uh, yeah. We, yeah. We'll send a happens, horse, bro. Okay. I need that yeah. form. Yeah, whatever, whatever it takes, we're willing to willing to help out. But generally speaking, it's super easy. We get a lot of feedback that, I mean, it's a few buttons. You can do it from a smartphone, tablet, computer. I mean, trying to be easy. Yeah. Um, well, what else, man? Um, I don't know. I guess we'll have an update for everybody after we get back from, from Denver. Yeah, we'll go to Denver Wednesday, like I said. Um, we Take funded that deal and... about a year ago, and it's finished now, the tenant should be taking occupancy by the end of the month, finishing touches, doing the punch list. Super excited about that. And then and that's when that 12 month period starts, right? The certificate of occupancy. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this time next year, we'll be selling that deal in Denver, yeah. mm -hmm. um, which is awesome. Yeah. Which is awesome. I can't believe a year's already gone by. I just love the fact that we can fund a deal before COVID have 2020 happen, have everything that's happened happen. And we're still still on target. We're still on target. Still, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. We were on time and on budget on that thing. So, yeah, that's a, during COVID, that's, that's an absolute yeah. home run. Which really is, is why we're giving them another million bucks, right? Yeah. All right, guys. Well, um, be sure to check us out on how to invest in CRE.com. If you haven't grabbed, uh, grabbed, if, if you haven't gotten your free LOI from our website, um, it's invest.howtoinvestincre.com. You'll get your free uh, letter of intent. We'll teach you how to use it. Um, make sure you're on our investor list. Like I said, I mean, we sent an email out and within the week it was full and we didn't, we didn't really double check with anyone. We didn't have to beg. We didn't have to ask. It's so like, if you're on the list and you're not paying attention to the emails, you're missing out. And we yeah. had some people who just, you know, were asking a lot of questions and didn't necessarily reserve a spot. And they were kind of out. Yeah. So, um, pay attention. And I would just encourage you, you know, there's a lot of people we talk to and they're just like, where do we get started? Well, you got to build up some trust with me and Brian. You got to build up some trust in what we're doing. Go watch our podcast. Yeah. Go watch our show. Listen to our offerings. R pay attention to our emails. Sign up for our investor list. And, and yeah, listen to our podcast and, and give us a call. We've gone to lunch and dinners and coffees with lots of investors who, you know, want to ask personal questions and, yeah. and uh, get some good answers. So just any of that. And it, it's really easy to get educated if you just, if you do all those things. Yep. All righty, man. Well, I think we're good, and we will catch you next time on How to Invest right. in Commercial Real Estate. Yeah. Later. Thanks. <laughs>